You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Horse crazy girls have long been supported by their patient dads. But what happens when it's the dad who discovers the joy of horses? Find out in this episode of Barn Stories. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prince, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. The story in this episode features a type of guy we all know, one who doesn't dabble in things, but instead dives in deep and becomes passionate about them. Most of these guys are drawn to hobbies like golf or maybe woodworking, but in our story, the focus is horses. His passion for horses, and his horse in particular, eventually involves his entire family. It's a great twist on the familiar story of a dad supporting his daughter's horse habit. In this case, though, it's the daughter and grandchildren who are brought along for the ride figuratively and literally. Fair warning, this story is bittersweet, but with an emphasis on sweet. Perhaps more than anything, it underscores just how much an industrious barn guy who is drawn to horses later in life can contribute to the equestrian community. So let's listen to One Last Gift, written by Betsy Mullen and read by Taylor Autumn. My father must have been having a midlife crisis. Many middle-aged men buy fast cars or motorcycles. My dad bought an off-the-track thoroughbred gelding named Champagne on Ice. Dad was the kind of person who grabbed life by the horns. He never did anything halfway. When my younger brother took up soccer, Dad, not content to sit on the sidelines, took classes to become a referee. And when Dad decided to learn to ski... He bypassed the local mountain in favor of a trip to Vermont for a stay-and-learn weekend. He returned home with a new love of his new sport that he passed on to my brother and me. After we both graduated and left home, I guess my dad needed something to help fill his time. He started taking riding lessons. And for him, the next logical step was to purchase his own horse then to use all of his vacation time to gain more experience working on the farm. When he had developed more confidence and knowledge, he moved Sham to a self-care barn, where he truly enjoyed being his horse's exclusive caretaker. Dad acquired more skills as Sham's wardrobe and tack began to require repairs. He taught himself to sew and learned to repair leather tack. In fact, he expanded this new skill set into a blanket cleaning and repair business. Meanwhile, he took Sham out to explore the trails in all of our local parks whenever he could. I could tell his urge to travel was building when he began to drop hints like, you know, I've never been farther west than Pittsburgh. After a few of those comments, I decided to ask Dad to join me and my family on a trip to Colorado to visit my husband's relatives. I extended the invitation while envisioning somehow fitting three adults and two children into my car with all of our luggage. What I didn't foresee was how this plan would morph into the family adventure of a lifetime. Because, of course, Dad wanted to bring Sham, too. This episode of Barn Stories is brought to you by El Encanto Resort in Costa Rica. Our cherished horses are more than a mere activity on a list. We are a bustling horse ranch with more than 50 of the finest Costa Rican bred horses and the heart of our sister property, the El Lugar Resort in Costa Rica. We create an adventure for you and your unique talent, abilities, and desires. What would make this the most beautiful experience of your life? We'd love to know. Learn more at www.elencanto.cr. He investigated overnight boarding options along our route, from Pennsylvania to Colorado, and I learned to drive the dually truck that pulled the horse trailer. 
The drive west took four days. And the joke that summer was that for 1,600 miles, I could watch as my inheritance was being spent on diesel fuel. The kids took turns riding in the dually whenever my little car got too cramped for the four of us. And we all had fun chatting on the walkie-talkies. We learned to look for truck stop rest areas, to park in the shade and feed sham ice cubes and wet hay to keep him hydrated. Each evening, we all spent time prepping Sham's stall, brushing him down and giving him food and water, before finally settling ourselves down into whatever lodging we had reserved for the night. We had grand views of the changing of the terrain as we headed west. We crossed the Mississippi River, saw the famous St. Louis Gateway Arch, stared out at the flat and windy Kansas landscape, and finally watched as the beautiful Rocky Mountains emerged up in the distance. In Colorado, we split up. My husband, the kids, and I traveled on to Denver to see the in-laws, while Dad turned north with Sham to visit a Colorado dude ranch. A cowboy for a week. My dad was truly in his element. I held my breath, hoping that a whole week in the saddle wouldn't be too much for him. And I also wondered about Sham's ability to adapt to life on a ranch. My worries were for naught, though as Sham did just fine, and Dad, of course, relished every moment. Only now, as we clean out Dad's house, have I begun to appreciate the planning that went into making that trip such a success. I think our family is genetically driven to overplan and make lists. For that trip, I have made a list of items to be sure our family did not forget. But when I found Dad's many extensive lists, I realized that my planning was dwarfed by the work my father did to make sure both he and Sham would have everything they needed. Not only were there things that Sham needed for routine care, such as hay, feed, and water, but also the what-ifs of first aid, medication, and shoeing items. Then there were the lists for the truck and the trailer, spare tires, tools, repair items— all of this planning had saved us when one of the trailer tires blew out in Kansas. I learned another lesson on that road trip, how to elevate the trailer and change a flat tire. Dad knew how to do it, and now I did too. Dad died doing what he loved, caring for his buddy Sham. I got the phone call on August 23, 2017. I was packing the car for an overnight camping trip with my daughter. Earlier, I had been texting with Dad. He'd offered camping supplies if we wanted them. No, I replied. We had everything we needed, and I was looking forward to talking to him later. After texting me, Dad went to help another boarder who was having difficulty loading her horse into the trailer. Then, while leading Sham in from the pasture, Dad just collapsed. He died instantly, and we buried him with a lock of Sham's mane. The days that followed that phone call are still a blur. I was, and still am, amazed and grateful for the number of people whose lives my dad and Sham touched. They all stepped forward to make sure Sham was cared for while our family attempted to come to grips with our loss. They even organized a memorial horse show to honor my father, and Sham was a part of the opening ceremony. The funds raised at this show went to complete the projects that Dad had not quite finished at the riding club where he was a member. My dad was an under-the-radar kind of guy. He didn't like to be in the spotlight, but he pitched in where he could and was indispensable working behind the scenes and he always took pride in what he did. I believe Sham kept my dad young. Beyond simply caring for the gelding, my dad's days were busy with riding, the blanket business, barn activities, riding club, an occasional horse show, and travel. He stayed active. He kept learning new skills. He enjoyed life and lived it to its fullest often lamenting that there just wasn't enough time to do all that he wanted to accomplish. Now I take care of Sham, with the help of another horse owner and dad's old barn. 
and I am the one learning these new skills. Sham and I have helped each other grieve, heal, and move forward without my dad. It's been hard. It will always be hard. But we're getting there. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.